Good evening. This is the Metuchen Board of Education meeting for Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. Would you all rise to the flag salute, please? Thank you. Notice of meeting, please. I hereby make this statement to indicate compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, known as Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of New Jersey in 1975, which became effective 90 days after enactment, January 19, 1976. Notice that this meeting was given by providing the location, time, and date of this meeting and posting of the same on the front door of the Board of Education offices by delivering copies to the Borough Hall and the Metuchen Public Library, the Home News and Tribune, the Criterion Sentinel, the Star Ledger, and by filing a copy with the Borough Clerk as prescribed by this law. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Bender. Here. Ms. Cook. Is absent. Ms. Cook had let us know she would not be here this evening. All right. Thank you. Mr. Derflinger. Here. Mr. Glassberg. Here. Dr. Johnson Marcus. Here. Ms. Colleen. Ms. Colleen is not here. Also absent. Okay. Mr. Lipton. Here. Dr. Spigner. Here. Mr. Suss. Here. Thank you. Um, we do not have any showcase success this evening, so the meeting is now open to the public for any topic. Nothing, Ed? <laughs> uh, we'll close that section. Um, move to some presentations. We do, thank you. I'd like to turn it over tonight to um, Mr. Prosky, aforementioned, and uh, Mr. Cohen, who will present our uh, New Jersey GPA results, that's the Graduation Proficiency Assessment, and um, as they're getting settled up uh, to, to do their presentation, Really excited about the results. Um, our participation is fantastic. That's a credit to Mr. Prowski and his staff, the parents, the students. And um, it, you know, it's hard when the state has changed tests a number of times over the last decade, but I'm really pleased at the, the initial look at the results. And certainly, we always want to get better, but I'm really happy. And uh, I'll turn it over to Mr. Cohen, Mr. Prowski. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting us to present this evening uh, the performance results from our rising seniors who are our graduating class of 2024. As you know, the NJGPA started as a pilot during the 21-22 school year. Uh, the GPA, the Graduation Professment Proficiency Assessment, is des designed to measure if the students are graduation ready. Specifically, it assesses our students in ELA with alignment to the grade 10 standards, and in math, their alignment to Algebra 1 and Geometry standards. Now this year, the March 2023 NJGPA results will be used to satisfy the graduation requirement for the class of 2024. I'm proud to say that with the help of my morning and evening text messages, as well as Mr. Stike's hard work ensuring student attendance, the Metuchen participation rate was at 100 percent. It's not an yep. easy task yep. considering that there were five days of testing. We're very proud of us for being able to, to accomplish that. So now let's take a look specifically at English language arts. When, we're na when we are analyzing the results here, you'll see on the graph that the state's performance was at 80.5 and our district's performance, or our high school's performance, was at 94.8% in English language arts. Some things for you to note. I want to highlight the fact that in order to analyze the results here, we did not have the state uh, overview of all of the assessment results from our students. So we had to actually go through and analyze the data from the individual student reports in order to come and give you this information tonight. So it was a lot of reading on our, our behalf to uh, come to these conclusions for you this evening. Uh, first off, it's in interesting to see that MHS outperformed the state by 14.3 percentage points. And our individual student reports reflect the majority of students having a strength in reading and analyzing both literary and informational text. We also demonstrated a strength in knowledge of language conventions. Uh, so that is, you know, the actual grammar and vocabulary section of our assessment. In order for us to show further growth, these are the areas that we need to uh, address some additional time. Some students needed additional assistance in some of the standard rules of English, and some students would benefit from additional instruction on how to use the details to support their written response to a prompt. 
So telling us the why, giving us the proof in their responses. Now looking at it a different way, since there are only two years of this uh, NJGPA, we can compare the two years and show that the state, the, you see the state's growth, then you also see the high school's growth. So we have continued to grow uh, very strong uh, in relationship to the state as well as to ourselves. Uh, let's, next, let's take a look at our ELA next steps. Uh, we plan on using assessment data to drive instructional planning. We continue to plan on reviewing the standards that were specifically addressed within this assessment. And our supervisor and staff will be collaborating on the analysis of the school evidence statement reports, which will be released shortly. I believe it's, if not today, they, I think they come out tomorrow or Thursday. So we'll have them for us to use uh, during the school year. ELA specific, we also want to focus in on research uh, practices, pushing in more informational text into our curriculum, uh, sharing reading and writing across disciplines in ELA and social studies, using self-questioning to help prompt transfer of taking diverse perspectives, and uh, this year we will be initiating our first of two years working on the writing process in collaboration with the National Writing Project. So those, those attempts or those uh, specific uh, ways to address our instruction will definitely assist us as we move forward. Now let's take a look at mathematics. Again, analyzing the results by looking at every student's individualized student report, we see that our growth at the state was at 55% this year and we were at 79.8%. So it shows that we were definitely above the state average here with our performance. Again, through careful examination of the ISRs, we see that our GLOWs include the performance of operations on polynomials, understanding and using different types of geometric proofs, solving linear, quadratic, and exponential equations, and understanding and interpreting algebraic expressions and linear models. Areas for us to grow in specifically are focused around solving real-world problems, reasoning quantitatively, creating and critiquing different types of models, specifically linear, quadratic, and exponential models, clearly expressing our reasoning and justifying our logic behind our mathematical solution, uh, solutions, and strategically using appropriate tools to model and apply the mathematical practices. You notice there's a lot with modeling on that. That's something that we had talked about this past year as far as something to work on, so we will continue to work on that uh, as we move forward. So with that, let's talk about our next, uh, let's look at our two-year results. Again, you see that we surpassed the state uh, both times, but you'll see that we are, our growth has continued to move forward. We are still growing in these areas. So um, while there is still area for improvement, I'm pretty proud of where we are right now. So now let's talk next steps. Across the board, best practices, we are planning on using assessment data to drive our instructional planning. We're looking at the uh, school evidence statements once they arrive uh, in our mailboxes so we can review those. Engaging in data-driven conversations with our teachers. We focus on differentiating instruction using the data results and implementation of the workshop model. And uh, the last bullet there is something that is specific to our entire department at the high school. We're focusing on further incorporation of the small group instruction with evidence directly in our lesson plans and formal observations. Math specific goals, we have alignment of the assessments to our state assessment standards and collaboration on design and implementation of exemplar lessons. So with that, I've kind of talked my uh, area of the presentation, so now it is time for Mr. Cohen to follow up with the subgroup data. Thank you, thanks for the opportunity to present tonight. Um, before I dive into the subgroup data, I did want to take a moment to reiterate our excitement and our pride. Dr. Caputo mentioned, you know, getting 100% participation shows a lot of great work done by Mr. Prosky, Mr. Stike, Chris Thuman, the tech guys, and our staff. Um, getting 95% of our students to pass and be determined college ready is a very great benchmark that I've always learned. When I first became an administrator, 
uh, first superintendent I worked with said 95% is our goal. Um, and so that's something to celebrate. A lot of hard work done by our, our entire staff and the community. When you get 100% to participate and take the test and do their best, you get 95%. It's a whole community accomplishment. Uh, and we are super excited about our subgroup data. We've been working now for a very long time to close the achievement gap. While it's not entirely closed, we've narrowed it dramatically. We're really excited to see some of our subgroups, for example, our Latino Hispanic subgroup, match the achievement of our highest performing subgroups historically in the English language arts. Uh, and we see dramatic jumps in improvement and performance of our economic disadvantage, both in language arts and in math. Um, and where we see a real closing of the gap uh, for Latino Hispanic in math uh, passing percentage as well. And while there's definitely still room to grow for our special ed population, we see dramatic growth from last year in their performance as well. So a lot of great work is being done uh, across the board, across departments, across our staff, by students working hard. Uh, we have our, inter, you know, our RTI intervention team working hard and doing great things for kids. Uh, so we're really happy and proud. Um, having said that, there's, we've been really explicit about what we can do to help those students that are still there needing support. Um, we have purchased in you know, collaboration talking with the curriculum committee and our part, uh, partnership with Varsity Tutors. There's a new uh, tool called on-demand chat tutoring, which will be available for all students 24-7 in language arts and math, as well as many other subjects as well. Uh, this will be a great support for teachers when they are doing workshop model and they break off into these data-driven differentiated groups where some kids, if they need a little bit of support, but the teacher's working with a small group, they can get on and chat with a certified teacher who can work with them through the problem and give them some reteaching. They can also access this, of course, for homework or if they're studying over the weekend and a teacher's not available. So we feel this would be an added support for all of our students, but in particularly those that need a little bit of extra support. Uh, of course, we're gonna do our data-driven differentiated instruction. We get better and better at that th each year. We're building and building. We anticipate that we've now had a lot of extra PD for our staff, especially in math, uh, on data-driven differentiated instruction from ASCD this year uh, with the on-demand chat that'll help them sort of engage the kids that are not in their small group instruction. And we can maximize the services of our RTI teachers who are gonna be pushing in, meeting with small groups for larger portions of time to give the students that uh, more individualized and small group targeted attention. And then specifically for our subgroups, we have federal funds that are still remaining that are designated for our subgroups most affected by COVID. Uh, so the students, we, we have identified there are 23 students that are gonna be uh, seniors next year that still need to, to pass this test in order to graduate. There are alternative pathways, but it is our goal to get them to pass this test, which is the benchmark for readiness. Uh, today, uh, Sofia Mercado was calling these students on the list to offer them 20 hours of one-on-one -on -one virtual tutoring in math to help them bring, get them ready. Uh, that they'll have those 20 hours up until October 10th when we re-give the, uh, the graduate proficiency assessment. And Mr. Porowski has also aligned up uh, teachers with a stipend to provide support for students uh, that need support in uh, meeting the graduation requirements. So September, right when they walk in the door, those teachers will also be meeting with those students to help them in language arts and math, getting them ready to pass this test. Uh, so that we don't need the alternative pathways for graduation. Uh, so with all that being said, uh, thank you, and we're happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, is anyone, yes, Mr. Suss question uh, by the way great job in getting everybody to uh, take the uh, exam so you talked so I know I understand about the alternative pathways to graduation and you're trying to get everyone to basically pass the 
test of, of the thing. There are other testing controls, or that this is all going to spring? So there is a fall block, which is intended for our high schools that use a block schedule. Uh, and then Mr. Porowski says, hey, you know, he reached out to me and said, is it possible to give these students another shot uh, early because you don't want to wait till the spring of, of, of senior year for them to retake it because then if they don't pass, then they, it's too late to really do some of the alternative pathways. So I reached out to the county and I asked our you know, seniors that didn't pass able to take the fall block test and they said absolutely. So we'll be able to re-administer that test early in October so that we'll be able to determine whether if, if after that test they can't pass, then we have plenty of time to pursue the alternatives. Other questions? Mr. Glasper. Uh, so I don't remember in, in my six years there being such growth in closing the achievement gap amongst uh, certain groups that we've identified as uh, needing some additional support. So that's amazing if I'm wrong. Somebody will tell me, but uh, that's really, really amazing. And I think what it, one of the reasons I think uh, personally is that we don't just look at the, you, you, not we, I'm not looking at anything. You don't just look at the results, you're digging into them in order to figure out what needs to happen in order to make, make things better, uh, in order to target um, the skills that need to be changed in order for students to be able to do better. Um, to have the one-on-one -on -one tutoring or uh, other types of support programs there. Um, because it's, it's so easy to just look at the data and be like, okay, let's file that away and let's move on to the next thing that we need to take care of to get ready for our school year. But it's only when you spend the time and dig into it the way that you have that you could um, make those specific kinds of changes. So uh, greatly appreciate that and, and hope that we can can keep helping uh, students who need it the most. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glassberg. Other questions from the board? Mr. Bendley? Thank you. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that they changed, the, the cut score was changed between last year and this year, right? Um, so that probably explains some of that dramatic growth in passing rates, both at the state and, and, and in our district, uh, because they made it a little easier to pass. Um, I agree that I mean, there are a couple of some amazing things here. One, the 100% participation, as Mr. Glassberg said, the, especially in ELA, the, the closing of the gap, right, where everybody is operating, um, you know, at, at, at that 90, you know, 96, 97, uh, 95, 96 rates. I think that's, re that's really impressive on the ELA side. I was a bit less impressed with the math, which I guess is typical. I've been saying that for 15 years since I've been here. Um, both in terms of how we performed relative to the state. I mean, we should be performing substantially higher than the state given our demographics um, and in some of those gaps. So uh, I guess that's something that, that, that you all will continue to focus on. And I saw that in, in, in some of the, um, the, the action plans that you talked about. Um, do you have any, 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 any view or opinion about why there, that, that gap between what, what's happening in, in our English language art scores and, and our math scores? Mr. Cohn, I, I just want to jump in. I'll let you answer the question, but Mr. Bendeley, just we didn't, um, we didn't compare the same way. Um, we announced 14.3% higher than, uh, percentage points higher than state in ELA, but we're actually 24.8 percentage points higher in math than the state. Can you pull that up again? Because I didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, two-year result analysis. So, well, it's on either slide. It's both on the uh, the slide, the results analysis, right, so, uh, and the two-year. Uh, oh, I was looking at the two-year. No, so above the, go to the next slide, I, please. Mr. Cohen can answer. I just wanted to point out. Yeah, no, though, no, no. I'm, I, I appreciate. I, yeah. I appreciate. I, I appreciate it. I was looking at the oh, two-year compare. I, I math for twenty-four point eight. I misread. I misread. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. I okay. misread the chart. Nope. So I, my, my, my apologies. It doesn't happen often that I misread a chart. No, I know, no, I know. <laughs> but I, I, I misread the chart. So my, my apologies, I'll withdraw the question, uh, yeah, that aspect of the question. Um, we are substantially above the state. We can still talk about 95 versus 80, our language arts versus our math, but if we're gonna pay, compare to state, we're double, almost twice as I much corrected. gap. No, it's all right, I I'm glad I got a chance to emphasize that because maybe we didn't emphasize that enough. So our focus in math, it, it's been a focus since we arrived in district. Um, and it's been a, pro, a process of 
getting uh, every math teacher comfortable with differentiated workshop model, small group instruction. Um, and there's a lot to get a teacher prepared and ready to do that effectively. Uh, there's a lot of professional development that goes into that. There's a lot of resources that they need for that. Um, we're talking a lot about furniture. We're, we're talking about, you know, minutes and how much time is needed for modeling by the teacher, how much time is needed for um, breaking up into small groups. So it's been a, a, a bigger trajectory of change. Uh, from since we arrived in district, but I, I'm really excited to say I think we all that background work, that training, that preparation, the resources, the materials, the understanding by the staff. I think we've hit that tipping point now with math. I, I we are improving, which I'm really excited to see. But I think this next year coming up is when all the pieces really come together, where the math teachers feel comfortable with differentiated small group instruction in math at the at the secondary level and uh, that we're gonna start seeing even greater increases in math than we, you know, our goal is to get to that 95% in math, and we're not there, uh, but I do think that we've, we've put all the pieces in place now to, to really close that gap. Thank you, and I do apologize. I, was, I thought the left was 2022 and the right was 2023, versus state versus MHS, so I apologize Understand. for misreading the, uh, misreading the chart. Um, I, do, I do echo what, um, Mr. Glassberg said, I think the, that emphasis on differentiation and on meeting every student where they are um, is, is fantastic. And I think that is what's driving closing the achievement gap. Um, and I, and I, I commend you guys for doing that. I mean, this is only the high school level, but I've seen it up and down the uh, you know, K-12, um, that, that kind of approach and attitude. And I hope to see that continue, right? I mean, on the English side, there's not much more for you to grow, right? I mean, you go to 96, 97. By the way, it gets harder, <laughs> right? As soon as you, the closer you get, the harder it gets to, to make that progress. But I hope to continue seeing that on the, on the math side. Likewise. So I have a quick question. Um, so there are other minority groups that probably was in a, like a smaller number. Is that why they're not mentioned separately? Yeah, the county state require that it must be more than 10. Uh, so we have some groups that uh, were less than 10, and we're not allowed to report those. Um, so we're just following what the county and the state require. So this was just for rising seniors, right? Yeah, this is all okay. 11th graders. La last year, now 12th graders. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Spigner. Other questions from the board? I'd just like to congratulate you, and I, I, not a unique take, but Obviously, the, the results are what's important, but the, the fact that we had 100% of students taking the exam, I think the results almost flow from that. The, 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 to me, the 100% uh, um, participation means that there is a lot of trust in the district, trust among students and parents, especially among students and parents that know perhaps that they're going to have trouble achieving on the exam and yet they take it anyway knowing that the administration the teachers are going to have the, the supports available for them if they don't make it they're not avoiding the test they're taking the test and that to me is the crux of why we see these improvements is that students and parents know that the district has has their backs, has the support available for them that if they, are, they, they take the exam and don't pass, that that outcome is okay and that the, the, the district will do everything it can to help them and support them to achieve that going forward in whatever means, whether it's an alternate path or being able to take the exam again. So obviously I'm thrilled at the in increases. They're, they're spectacular, special in spe especially in special mm -hmm. ed. Um, those, those, those increases are just spectacular. They're all good, they're all great. The closing of the gaps among other groups is great also, but the one that just jumps off the page is the special ed increases, something we've talked about for a very long time and we know it's, it's somewhat difficult to get those type of improvements and here, here it's been achieved. And I think it's something to highlight and to applaud but I think the 100% participation rate, as I said, is something that indicates where where uh, the high school is, where Dr. Porowski, where Mr. I, may, I promoted you, doctor, where Mr. Porowski's um, um, 
principalship is, where his administration is, where the teachers in the high school are, and throughout the district for that matter, that they've achieved a level of trust with the students and parents that allow these types of results to, to become evident. And uh, I want to applaud both of you for all the work you've done, and all the administrators and teachers, and Dr. Caputo as well, of course, because these are just wonderful numbers. So thank you for your report. Thank you. Yeah, I just actually, you know, I'm just going to take advantage. Of, I really appreciate you making that point, uh, Mr. Lifton. Uh, one thing, I take this opportunity publicly to say, because I think most parents know, but just want to make sure, you know, when your child takes the test, uh, you get good information about what your child has learned. We get good information. Uh, and we don't use the test score from a state test against a child at all. It can only help a child. So when we do our placement, we look at a lot of different data points when it comes to placement. We, we'll do grades, we'll do our link it, our benchmark, we'll do teacher recommendation, and then we have like readiness exams to place a child. We don't look at the state test score. Then if a parent does want to appeal, perhaps their child was right on the cusp, then we can look and if the test score is high, we, we bump them up. If the test score is not, we don't use that. We still have the conversation, but that test score, a state test score is never used to bump a child down, to hurt a child in any way. It's only to get good information and perhaps bump up. And just a just quick follow-up on that. I think that some students are mu much stronger in testing than other students. So that, that's probably that's a good thing to hear, that you take that in consideration as well, when there is you know, a, a gray area, let's say. So. Not always, but it, it could be a you know key factor for some students who are strong testing. Yeah, Just we, students. we see students with A pluses all the time, yeah. and then they they do okay on the test, and it's just like it's, that's not their their way of performing and demonstrating what they learn best. And we understand that, and we would never want that to hurt a child. For sure. Thank you. Any other Thank you. comments or questions from the board? Thank you both. Okay. Thank you, um, Dr. Caputo. We have some more. Presentations. We do, Ms. Elliott. We have slides up for these, right? Yes. So, I'll, since we we put them up, I'll I, I see Mr. Okay. Um, you're heading up to the top, so mm -hmm. I'll take advantage of that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. So um, not as exciting as Mr. Prowski and Mr. Cohen, but um, as required of every school district twice a year, we have the, the student safety data system report and the HIB report for period two. So this covers the period from January to June, this first half of the year, second half of the school year, first half of the calendar year. We're required to present by school number of incidents, so they're listed here, 0, 3, 13, 27 for, uh, 11 for a total of 27 across the district. So what are these incidents? These are the categories where we re report them, and, and a, a, a certain incident may fall into multiple categories. Thank you for putting that note on there, Ms. Alievich. Um, so it's vandalism, violence, substances, weapons, HIV confirmed, HIV alleged, or other incidents leading to removal. So now these aren't um, just number of HIVs, these are categories that are, um, that are uh, identified as incidents. So you can see the numbers in the various boxes there. It, specifically around HIV by school, um, 0, 3, 14, 7, and 27, those are the HIVs. And we've promised the board, we're not required to present this, but we've promised the board that option G refers to our policy, where if, even if all the information reported to a principal turns out, turned out to be true, it still wouldn't be HIV, we have a, our policy that the principal can treat that as a code of conduct and not go the HIV route. If they're 100% positive, even if all the facts were true, we don't often use it, we used it eight times last year. And that's it. Any questions? Thank you, Dr. Caputo. Questions from the board? Mr. Suss? I can, there you go. Hello? Better. Yes. Better. Thanks for the presentation. Um, the stats for EMS seem somewhat alarming. I don't think I remember EMS uh, outdoing the high school, especially with the number of violence. 
I don't, any thoughts or? Talking about eight cases, um, I mean, violence in a middle school might, you know, an incident in a middle school might count as violence, and we, we take that real seriously and report it as such. No, I'm, I'm not concerned. I'm concerned about there's any numbers in any boxes, but I'm not concerned with, with that particular number. We take little instances which may not even be considered in other places, we take those very seriously. I, I, know, I know you're taking it seriously. Does any, any thoughts on that? Like, again, my observation and feel free to tell me um, I'm incorrect, is that normally the high school has the most number of incidents, incidents followed by the other schools, and that you know the high school, look, there's fights sometimes, et cetera. And it's just surprising the numbers that I'm seeing, that there's one violence incident in the high school and there's eight in the middle school. Yeah, I, All right, I, just year to year, I don't think there's anything special, it's just that we take it really seriously and any incident that's required for us to uh, report, we do, so. I think that's probably the good reflection on the high school, maybe. I yeah. would see it that way because the kids are more mature, you know, little scuffles might have my perspective, but uh, again, it depends on what kind of scuffle it was, but maybe we need to see it that way, and by the time they get to high school, a little bit more, you know, thought and talking and communication, so I'd like to think. I'd like to think that, Mr. Suss, if you added the six other incidences which don't fall in those categories, then the high school's the same. So it's just a matter of what boxes they fall in. You I, know, think, I think the I, previous slide, one was 13, one was 11. That's HIVs. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah those are HIVs. Um, yeah, certainly more um, harassment, intimidation, bullying at yeah. uh, the middle school. Yeah. We don't, again, I've said this in the first year I've been here, as long as there's one number up there, we're, we still got to work harder because we never want one kid to experience bullying. But again, we investigate every single case and we report every case in Metuchen. We want to stop it by identifying it, punishing it when it needs punishing, highlighting it that this is not acceptable. Other questions from the board? Mr. Benderley? I'm just going to reflect on uh, what Mr. Suss said. It does seem to me that this year um, incidences at Edgar have been higher than, have been hearing more about it than, than prior years. I, I don't know if there, if it's a you know, kind of post-COVID return to, you know, you know, you return to socialization or after not having practice for, for a while for that age, those ages, but it does seem like um, incidences at Edgar have been higher than I remember in the past. Can I interject something? Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I put the reports in actually like on homeroom for these and when it says violence, sometimes it's not the violence that you think, like real violence, like even if it's kind of like a kid shoved another kid mm -hmm. in the hallway or something, they'd have to count that as violence. Um, so there, it could be something that sounds really, really terrible and I don't think that's acceptable behavior at all, and like it should be counted as violence, but I don't want you guys to think that like, you know, there's like gang fights or something like that happening in the middle schools. I, I think we Thank know that, that that's not happening. Yeah, okay, so, good. So, so I, I will say compared to many other, other yes, districts around right. the state, you know, this, right. this would be a great, these are great numbers to have. Right. Yes. Um, but it does seem as you, you, you took these 14 HIV cases plus the, uh, the, the option Gs, which I think were almost all in the middle school, um, yeah, the eight, right, the eight were all in the middle school. Yeah, we definitely find the bullying word thrown around a lot. And so when the administration sees, like, facts, even if every accusation is true, sometimes they're not bullying. Oh, they I absolutely, words, so. I, and I have no problem with, with, with option G, and, yeah. and I was there, I was on the board when that was put in place. But just look at the numbers, right? That's 14, uh, you know, confirmed bullying cases plus eight option Gs. It seems like, like there's a lot there was a lot going on in middle school. Yeah, our job is to, you know, help them mature and grow, and yeah. I guess we're seeing that when they get to the high school, and hopefully when they get beyond high school, they're that much more prepared for college and the workplace and to be an adult, right, when they turn 18, so. It's a, it is a difficult age. Other, uh, other questions from the board? Thank you, Dr. Caputo. Thank you. I'll come back to my table. I just have a couple updates, but there's, or I could do it from here. Um, I don't have any slides for it, but um, there's two reports uh, that you have that are required. One is, the, 
um, the safe return plan that every school district has to do. We call it the road forward because that's what it was um, originally we required. So I've included that for the board. It's on our website. Thank you, Ms. Ali, for putting that up there. And the one that needs to be approved tonight by the board is our virtual or remote instruction plan. That one is required by July 31st in every district in the state. And we had very, very minor changes because we were back by the middle of 2020 and, and, and by the, 20, you know, the following school year back really full time. Last year was a really a normal year. So we still have our pandemic plan that's due in, um, in September. And we have our, um, our virtual and remote, remote plan should we ever have to use it again. We certainly, I thought, did a pretty good job. I think as well as anyone did in the state. Um, we hope we never have to implement it again. But should we, we, we have the plan and we have some tweaks that we've made to it over time. Um, and um, the, the, the pandemic plan is something that's required for all districts to have. And um, um, we, we have them all posted on the website. Thank you, Ms. Alievich. And the public can read those. Again, like I said, very minor changes from six months ago um, that, that we, um, that we had to plan at that time. Thank you, Dr. Caputo. Other questions on, on those items from the board? Thank you very much, Dr. Caputo. Okay. Um, moving on to the reports, uh, President's report. I do not have a report this evening. What? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that yet. We had, there's a uh, special public comment portion just for the safe return plan and virtual instruction plan. Um, is there any comment from the public? Seeing none, we'll close that section and we will move to the reports. President Schwartz, I do not have one. Uh, Dr. Caputo? Just one update for the board. At our last board meeting, we met uh, Regina Nugent, who was um, selected by the high school to be our student board member. Um, she carried herself really well. I was really excited to get to work with her more, and I know the board, you really were as well. So a turn of events, family life, they've, they're relocating. So Regina won't be able to, obviously she won't be a student at Metuchen High School, so she can't be our, um, our student board member. So Mr. Prosky's already, um, he's put out the, uh, the notice to all the high school. So if there's any high school students of any grades, rising ninth through rising 12th grader, who is interested, complete the, um, the very short form that Mr. Prosky has created, and you'll be considered for a spot to sit right down this end and be the, um, the student board member from Metuchen High School. Absolutely, and uh, considering our experience with the, with the very first one, Mr. Salaski, um, the, the student board member brought a lot to, to uh, our function and uh, gave the board a lot of information as far as the students. It's a very important role, and we certainly, as the board, we would certainly um, ask any, any student who is interested to please uh, consider it. Uh, we, we certainly would value your, your input, and uh, it's very important to us to have somebody from the student body here to help us. So, so thank you. And it's unfortunate that, um, that Regina, um, Regina, who seemed like she was going to do a wonderful job, won't be able to do that. So, okay, thank you. Um, moving on to committee reports. Um, Mr. Benderly, do you have anything? None. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cook is not here. Does, do we have a policy committee report? Mm -hmm. Did policy committee meet? Policy has not met since our last meeting, right, Mr. Uh, Harvey? Yep. Correct. I think we meet next week. Tuesday. Is that correct? Hold on, yeah. let me double check my calendar. In the triple, triple header. header. Yes, we meet next week, policy. Okay, thank you. Mr. Dirk Fickler has a curriculum at? Same, nothing to report. We meet next Tuesday. Okay, Dr. Johnson Marcus, equity? Hi, uh, equity has not met, but we will meet on August 30th. Um, but I do have an exciting update from the Human Relations Commission. Of course, please. South, the <clears throat> today marks the start of South Asian Heritage Month, and we invite you all to come and celebrate the rich culture and history of eight countries that comprise South Asia. Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. Uh, this will happen, our celebration, first time ever in Metuchen, on Friday, this Friday, the 21st, from 6 to 8 p.m. on the plaza. There's going to be a beautiful evening planned by the South Asian families of Metuchen with dance performances, henna, uh, and tables showcasing cultural items and um, things of interest from each country. There'll be a, even a Zumba mini class with music from the region. So put your dancing shoes on and hopefully I'll <laughs> see you all, all down there 
on Friday at 6 p.m. on the plaza. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson Marcus. Um, Mr. Glassberg, uh, construction. Construction committee met last night. Um, we discussed the following topics. We talked about notification of uh, neighbors regarding construction. So a letter will be going out just making sure that all of the streets around our buildings know that there will be construction happening in the, in the future and that there could be an impact from that. Um, we're also, we also talked about an update on the bond sale and in the impact to taxpayers. Uh, the goal of the committee is, you know, obviously we want to just try to make sure that the tax impact uh, as closely as possible matches uh, the amount that they expected it to be when they voted for the referendum and the committee is working hard to, to do that. We discussed the pilot program um, the, from the borough, which we've previously talked about in the lead up to the referendum and perhaps afterwards as well. The committee is asking, will ask for uh, a written agreement from the borough outlining the $6 million in pilot funds that they uh, promised over the 30 year period. We discussed um, a PLA, public labor agreement, uh, and whether or not to sign one of those in relation to the construction project as we go out to bid in September for the first phase of the project. And uh, we also discussed a meeting that will take place between Spiesel Architects, Greyhawk, our construction managing uh, firm, TTI and JEA environmental consultant and the Metuchen Union representatives uh, to discuss things such as safety and health of the project um, when the construction gets underway. So those are the topics that we talked about. The next committee meeting is August 21st. Um, that is scheduled as a public meeting at 7 p.m. in the library uh, with a, a private meeting to follow that. And that would be uh, updates on the project that the public would be able to come out and ask us questions about or just see and learn and uh, listen to us have our meeting. So everybody's welcome to attend that on August 21st, 7 p.m. In, in the library. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glassberg. Um, Ms. Colleen is not here. Did uh, extracurricular meet? Uh, they did not, but I think they're meeting the same day as yep. curriculum and policy. Okay, great. Uh, Dr. Spigner, do you have anything? No, nothing. No? Mr. Suss, um, finance. Yes, so finance met last night. Uh, we talked about the ongoing saga with the HVAC project at the high school. Uh, we talked about filter replacement for some of the uh, air purifiers that we uh, have previously purchased. We got a budget overview for 22-23, talking about um, the various transfers that we did, as well as uh, uh, some of the, the, the surplus accounts. We talked about whiteboard replacement at Campbell School. It seems that some of the uh, old green boards that the people used to use chalk on, we painted with uh, a special paint that we could use whiteboard markers on, and some of them potentially need to be um, the boards need to be the replaced or repainted, looking into that. Um, we got an update on some purchases, some of the fitness, new fitness equipment for the gym, a sled for the football team, uh, protective helmets for the football team, and we talked about the new sick leave law. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments or questions for any of those uh, committee reports from the board? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, is there any old business from the board? Seeing none, is there any new business from the board? Congratulations to Dr. Johnson Marcus on her promotion. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Suss. <laughs> um, okay, I'd like to move the approval of minutes of the Board of Education meetings, June 27, 2023, Special Business Meeting 1, June 27, 2023, Special Business Meeting 2, June 27, 2023, Board Meeting. Um, is there a second? Mr. Glassberg, are there any comments or corrections on those minutes? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Benderley. Yes. Mr. Durflinger. Yes. Mr. Glassberg. Yes. Dr. Johnson Marcus. Yes. Mr. Lifton. Yes. Dr. Spigner. Yes. Mr. Suss. Abstain. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, the meeting is now open to the public for any item. Seeing none, we'll close that section. Uh, move to the recommendation of the superintendent of schools 
Oftentimes it may appear to members of our audience that the Board of Education takes action with very little comment and in many cases a unanimous vote. Before a matter is placed on the agenda at a public meeting, the administration has thoroughly reviewed the matter with the superintendent of schools. If the superintendent is satisfied that the matter is ready to be presented to the Board of Education, it is then referred to the appropriate board committee. The members of the board committee work with the administration and the superintendent to assure that the members fully understand the matter. When the committee is satisfied with the matter, it is presented to the Board of Education for discussion before any final action is taken. Only then is it placed on the agenda for action at a public meeting. I'd like to move the personnel items A1 through 26. Is there a second? Um, Mr. Durflinger, are there any comments or questions on those items? Mr. Lifton, I'd just like to say thank you, Mr. Harvier, and all the administrative assistants um, in, our, in our central office. Much of the personnel section today has to deal with um, uh, adjustments to salaries based on several of the groups um, settling, and I just want to thank, they work really hard and really quick. So that most of those folks got their raises with their first uh, paycheck if they're a 12-month employee, and certainly they're in place for 10-month employees right away. So thank you to all them for their hard work. Absolutely. Thank you. It's, uh, we think Metuchen's a small town, and we are, but even a small district has an awful lot of people who work in it and rely on their, their paychecks, and they've negotiated, the, the bargaining units have negotiated the increases that deserve the increases, and the fact that the central office staff is able to put it in place so that everyone gets what they're entitled to is certainly worth note. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions on those items? Roll call, please. Um, did I get a second? You yes. did, Mr. Yeah. Durflinger. Dr. Caputo seconded it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Durflinger was the second. Yes. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Benderly. Yes. Mr. Durflinger. Yes. Mr. Glassberg. Yes. Dr. Johnson Marcus. Yes. Mr. Lifton. Yes. Dr. Spigner. Yes. Mr. Suss. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Suss, finance. Uh, I'd like to move items B1 through B9 as listed on the agenda. Thank you. Is there a, um, is there a second? Yep. <laughs> Dr. Spigner, um, any comments or questions on those items? Seeing none, we'll call, please. Mr. Benderley. Uh, yes, except for um, number two, I'll stand on anything, Mr. Rutgers. Thank you. Mr. Durflinger. Yes. Mr. Glasper. Yes. Dr. Johnson Marcus. Yes. Mr. Lifton. Yes. Dr. Spigner. Yes. Mr. Suss. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. I'd like to move um, the policy items C1 and 2. Is there a second? Mr. Suss, are there any comments or questions on those items? I have a quick one, Mr. Lifton. Um, the calendar is up for approval tonight. Um, there's been no significant substantial changes to the actual student or teacher days except that we have now the principals at the end of the year met with their teams, established the conferences. So now we update the calendar just with those conferences. Thank you, Mr. Alievich, for doing that. And so that's why we're asking the board to approve that tonight. So no changes to the 10-month the, the, the or even 12-month calendar up top, just addition of the conferences on the bottom. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation, Dr. Pudo. Other comments or questions on these items? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Benderling. Yes. Mr. Durflinger. Yes. Mr. Glassberg. Yes. Dr. Johnson Marcus. Yes. Mr. Lifton. Yes. Dr. Spigner. Yes. Mr. Suss. Abstain on C1, yes on C2. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, Mr. Durflinger, curriculum. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to move items D1 through 5 as listed on the agenda, please. Thank you. Is there a second? Uh, Dr. Johnson Marcus, are there any comments or questions on those items? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Benderling. Yes. Mr. Durflinger. Yes. Mr. Glassberg. Yes. Dr. Johnson Marcus. Yes. Mr. Lipton. Yes. Dr. Spigner. Yes. Mr. Suss. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, the meeting is now open to the public for any topic. Seeing none, we'll close that section, move to announcements. Dr. Spigner. Yes, so the high school, there's senior portraits taking place, 8-1 through 8-4. Uh, band camp from 8-16 to the 20th. At Edgar Middle School, there's open house on the 24th, August 24th. At Moss, there's a book swap going on July, on July 20th, sorry, and on August the 17th. 
and our next meeting is 8, 8 at 8 p.m. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Not sure I like that. Hey, it's got to be lucky. Um, okay, at this point, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Dr. Johnson Marcus, all in favor? Thank you and good night. <laughs>